Hey guys, it's Doc, and you are going to want to watch this video. You know why? Because <laughs> not only are we going to run a bunch of equipment, but we're probably going to find a bunch of gold, and we're going to give it all away to you guys. <laughs> yes, it's true. Hold on one sec. I'll explain. Hey guys, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to run a bunch of equipment. We're going to run um, a piglet flare, the new piglet flare. We're going to run the multi sluice. We're going to run this sort of as a commercial cleanup operation, not necessarily like a raw pay operation today. I'm going to show you something about the flow pan and we're running these mystery buckets. Now <laughs> we did our fall cleanup at the shop <laughs> and we found these buckets that are basically old concentrates. And I found one at the house that we don't, we have no idea what's inside of it. I swear to you, we have no idea. I do know that there's a lot of gold in it. How much, I don't know. There could be um, a few grams, a few hundred dollars. There could be a few ounces. There could be three, $4,000. I don't know, I do not know. We're gonna run it through the piglet flare like a, like a super concentrator. Then we're gonna take those and then we're gonna show you stripping. The, we're gonna run the multi sluice. We're gonna run the multi sluice in a stripping mode, which is not a capture mode. It's to strip out all your black sands and get down to pure gold as much as possible. So we're gonna do that. And then while these guys are out here doing that, I'm gonna hop over. Someone had a question about the flow pan and uh, whether you can use it in no flow situations. So I'll do a little thing on the, on the uh, flow pan. So how do you win it? You only gotta do two things. In the description below, there's a link. So after you watch this video, click the link in the description below and that'll take you to a page on our website. Everything is explained there. And basically you just have to be a YouTube subscriber. So subscribe to YouTube, subscribe to our channel, subscribe to our channel, and then go over to the website and we started a brand new newsletter, um, a prospecting and gold newsletter. We send out maybe once a month, we'll send out a new p information post or a newsletter. It's the list is not sold. We don't use it for marketing. You're not gonna see emails every day but just go over there and sign up on that page and just you just need your full name and your email address. But the reason why we're using that is that puts all those people in chronological order and we're gonna use a random number generator, which we always do, to pick the winners. So it's real simple. So step number one, let me show you what we're gonna run, talk about the equipment a little bit, and then we'll go ahead and run it and we'll see what kind of goal we got. So hold on. Okay, so you might hear a bunch of background noise and that's because we're out here behind the shop today. And uh, it's a nasty kind of cloudy day, but it's not cold yet, which is nice. Oh, by the way, isn't that sexy? Oh, is it no shave November? No, it is mo gold November, mofo, mo gold November. This is the piglet flare. This is our brand new release for this past year. And we basically took the piglet and we put a flare just like the Raptor High Banker. So understand we have the Super Hog, which is the world's largest high banker. We have the Raptor Flare and the Raptor Flare with extension. That's um, probably our most popular unit. That's the standard size unit. Super Hog is more of a commercial grade unit. And then we have the Piglet. Well, a lot of people wanted, kept asking for the Flare, the Flare, the Flare on the Piglet. So we came out with the Flare. So we have, so we have three sizes of high bankers. We have the Super Hog, which is 13 feet long, the world's largest high banker. We have the Raptor Flare, and then we have the Piglet and the Piglet also with a piglet flare on it. But we're gonna run this like a concentrator. So here's the, <laughs> here's this nasty stuff. And let me show you, there's stuff actually growing, growing in some of these buckets. So, and I wanna show you also, watch this. This bucket's been sitting outside so long. <laughs> it's just disintegrating. It's just the plastic, it just, that's how old some of this. I bet you this is over two and a half years old. This I have no idea. So that's what we're doing. All right, so while uh, Doug's putting a clamp on that hose, that final clamp, let me go ahead and uh, let's just check the angle. I wanna run everything today kind of hot. My goal is, is to get basically down to pure gold as fast as possible. So this is sort of like a commercial cleanup operation. We have a lot of commercial ops that use this type of equipment for the cleanup. It's inexpensive, it's portable, so they use it. My top section where most people would probably say run that at about an eight degree. I'm running at 10 degree. And I'm running my bottom at about a seven degree pitch. Now let's go look at the multi sluice. <laughs> That's pretty hot. That's a 12 degree multi sluice with a washer mat. Um, and just so you know, on the multi sluice, when I, 
when I came up with the multi sluice, we came up with a plug system. So it has, you have the option of ordering an 1100 GPH pump. And if you just put this hose on there, you'll have about 1100 GPH. But if you insert this plug that's included, it takes it down to about 800 GPH. And that's what you use on the stripping step. Put it in, put the hose on. So a lot of people ask about an electric pump on these high bankers. The problem is, is PSI. You want this, this is the pressure that you want to make this, to make this washing action. Because I've got the clay claw in it. So when you dump rocks in here, this holds them. And then when you're done washing it, you can walk away when that material's done, lift up your clay claw, and all the rocks fall out. So you really want pressure. And the only way you get pressure really is with a gas pump. Let me shut that off so I'm not screaming over it. But I wanted you to see that running. Then we go down to a variety of mats. So we've got talon mat. We've got trim river hog. We've got scrubber. Let's see if I can identify them all here. That looks like river hog. And then maybe, what is that, mother load down here? I don't know. So anyway, so this is the new flare extension. This flap right here is controllable. So you want to move this. A lot of people don't understand that you can move this flap and put more pressure on the incoming water, and that'll flatten this up. So this will spread and flatten this out, and it starts off, um, you got a piece of, I believe, talon, then you're gonna go mother load, a strip of wave mat. Then I've got, what is this? That's Yukon and mother load and mother load. So that's the, that's the whole setup of the piglet flare. The Raptor flare is basically the same thing. So essentially with all of our units, we start off narrow and aggressive, really turbulent, horribly turbulent. No gold should stay in there. And guess what we find? <laughs> We usually find about 70% of our gold right up in here. The bottom, anything that doesn't get caught in that turbulent area is going to be treated to something different. It's narrower, not as deep, smoother run. And that's, you look at all of our equipment, all of our equipment is designed that same way. Narrow, aggressive, bumpy, smooth down below. The Super Hog does that in four sections <laughs> for 13 feet, by the way. So here's one of the principles of our equipment. Vary the mats. What's the definition of insanity? Repeating the same thing over and over, expecting different results. So that's why if you just have the plain same ripples all the way down, it's not gonna work. Expose your slurry to different types of exchanges, obstacles, all the way down. It will eventually, that piece of gold that's wanting to get out will eventually find a place to rest. And you can see this in the mats. As an example. See the talon mat here? See all the material dancing? That's a really cool shot, actually. You can see the material dancing. I see lead shot, round lead shot, just dancing around, dancing around, dancing around. Over here. As we go down, look, this mat looks completely different. The wave mat looks different. It's got a little hump to it. This is the Yukon. It looks different, different amount of material in it. And then mother load and mother load. Swear to God, on my heart, on a Bible, I have no idea how much gold is in this thing. Like I said, it could be a couple grams. It could be four ounces. I have no idea what's in here. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, when you can see gold from back here, you know it's going to be good. So, <laughs> oh man, I see a picker. Okay, 
You see that line right there? That's all fine gold. But look at there's a picker. Look at that picker right there. See what you see? That. See that thing? That's actually a piece of gold right there. I think that's a piece of gold. Look at that. That is a pancake. That is like a piece of paper. Look at that. Look how look how flat that is. Look how flat that is. That's like a piece of paper sitting right there. Man, look at the fine gold line right there. Okay. So let me explain what we just did here. We just undid the wing nuts and we tilt the header box back. And I came around to the back side of this unit and look what I see. See it right up in that corner up there? That's a nugget. Holy crap. There's all kinds of gold in here. Look at the fine gold in here. That's lead shot. Look at the gold up in here in <laughs> that moss. That moss is absolutely loaded with gold. And there's that nugget. Look at it. That's cool. Okay, so for you guys, we went ahead and took the header box completely off and set it off to the side. So this is the flood chamber. There's that nugget I was talking about. There's just gold packed all in here. See it? Right there. And then when you lift this up, look at that right there. That first piece of talon mat. That's crazy. Okay, when you gently lift this up, you're gonna see a huge amount of black sand. And there's just filled with fine. There is so much fine gold in here. Look at it. That's anything that's yellowish looking, it's all fine gold. It's just packed in here. Like that right there. <laughs> Look at that piece right there. That's nice. That's actually not a nugget, it's more like a flake. That's actually more like a flake there. So hopefully, hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing here. And you'll be able to see the gold. See it? Get that all in there. All right, so I finished rinsing out these mats. Whoever gets this unit, um, <laughs> check the mats, because I, I never wash my mats well, and there's gonna be gold probably sitting in the mats or on the tape or something, so check. Okay, that was fun. Now we're gonna go strip it. Remember, a lot of people don't understand the multi-sluice. You can go to multisluice.com and you can read up on it more, and there's all kinds of instructions, angles, mats, all kinds of stuff. But let me explain what we're doing today. So here's the aggressive mat that you would normally put in first. This is a high capture mat. This is the washer mat. So this is your stripping mat. This rides the fine line. And let me explain what I mean. If I were to put this sluice way, way, way up where nothing would stay in it, not even gold. If I were to tick it down and tick it down and tick it down, what's the first thing that's going to stay in that sluice? Gold, because it's the heaviest. And that's kind of the principle here. So it's the gold is barely hanging on here so that everything else will strip out. So we should see gold, heavy, heavy deposits. My prediction is heavy deposits up under here, heavy deposits real clean, heavy deposits with a little more black sand, a little bit more black sand, a little bit more black sand as we go down and probably gold all the way down. That's the point. So the harder you run this, the, like I said, you don't want anything to stay but the gold is the way you think about this. Nothing stays, click, but the gold. So you'll have gold all the way down here and it's about stripping. You're not trying to, you're not worried about what's in the tailings at this point. You can just do another run with it. You can tilt it back down a little more and do another run. But this is about getting everything out but the gold. 
All right, so Santa Claus is joining me for this shoot. Doug is gonna run the multi sluice. Um, and I'm gonna put in, I've got the one plug in it and then we're gonna hook it up with a battery. Now let me show you real quick. The battery that I'm using for this is this little, it's like a wheelchair cart battery. And like I said, this thing will run, I've run it 45 minutes straight nonstop. So I don't even know, I'm assuming you can get an hour to two hours out of this little battery. I'll put a link in the on that page that's down below that I'm linking to in this video. Um, I'll put a link to this on Amazon where you can get it. So when you first start this up, you're going to see sort of tension bubbles in the mat. And all I do is I just take a brush, I just rub it, and almost, I would say 90% of those bubbles will go away. The older the mat is, the better it works actually. This mat's not really old, but you can see now almost all those tension bubbles are gone. So people ask, do you use jet dry? And the answer is, is no. Gold was floating all over the place when we were cleaning those mats, but why don't we have to use jet dry in here? It's because of the way that we designed the upper so chamber. The key to breaking surface tension is turbulence. And that's what you want. So you've got turbulence here. You've got turbulent, very, very turbulent here. And this water, if you can see, actually has to, because the mat is curled, the water has to go back up under itself. So there's 99.99999% chance that gold will float out of here. Uh, Kevin Hoagland actually, Kevin Hoagland actually uses this for his super, super dry um, desert concentrates with no fear of losing any gold from floating because of that system. So what Doug's going to do, we're going to do this kind of slow. All he's going to do is he's just going to take a big, big scoop at a time and he's just going to feed it just like this. You're going to feed that right into there, into that system. That's it. Let me see. Let me just check the sluice real quick. Yeah, it's running fairly hot. I'd almost like it a little bit hotter, but I'm going to leave it just like that. But you can already start to see after that one scoop. That's one, that's one tablespoon or two tablespoons. See the gold line forming up there and up under here? And then you can see the lead shot. Watch that lead shot just bounce around. Depending on, depending on how aggressively you run it, I would say you, the first run of your stripping run, if you run it really hot, you'll probably get about 90% of your gold. Again, what's the purpose? Do you know? Do you remember? Strip. We're not trying to capture gold. We're trying to strip the gold out so we do less cleaning, less finishing. Um, and that's where a lot of people use this. There's a commercial op. Matter of fact, maybe I'll put up some pictures real quick um, of this guy that sent in a real great article on our website. He has a small one-man commercial or two-man commercial operation. Uh, he uses our mats in his commercial operation, and then he takes the washer mat in a stream sluice with a power pump, and he strips the gold out. And I'll put up some pictures of that real quick. It's really cool. Anyways, so I'm getting ready. I'm going to show you before I shut this down. So like I said, you're going to see gold. Those yellow lines are gold. And you'll see gold lines all the way down. But you'll see your highest concentration at the top and the cleanest part at the top. So a lot of times what people will do is they'll take the first two or three mats and put it in a pan and then take these, which will have a little more black sand and there's lead shot and everything else. And they'll take these and they'll put it in a different pan. I'm going to shut this down. Okay, so here's what we do on the multi sluice. Here's what I like to do. All I do is I unhook my box. There's a little bungee right here. I unhook it. And then I just take this. And I put this in my water tub over here. 
The reason why you put it in your water tub is it can, it can create a siphon, like if you're working in your garage and all of a sudden all that water tub water will just siphon out. But you can see what I'm talking about here. Let me grab the camera and I'll show you. I'm gonna do this upside down. <laughs> so here's the top of the sluice. And I want you to see what I see. Here where it's extremely turbulent, nothing should be able to stay in here. And guess what stays? The heaviest stuff. So there's, a, there's that big chunk right there, by the way. Big flat. There's another flake right there too. So those big flat pieces actually stayed there. And then as you go down, you'll start to see, now this is, a lot of this gold is 100 to 250 mesh in here. See the lead shot? And as you go down the mat, what you'll see is it gets a little calmer and a little calmer. So you're gonna see, so as we go down this mat, you're gonna be able to see more and more um, non-gold material inside this sluice. There. I just want you to get an idea of what I'm talking about here. Now, like I said, by weight, 90 to 95 percent of the weight will be caught on your first run. There will be gold in here on super, super fine, so just rerun it. All right, so now I'm going to clean out this mat. I'm going to show you a little method that's real simple to do, it's real easy, and I'll tell you why I'm doing this. What I'm going to do is, my guess is that there's probably, I don't know, maybe ounce and a half, two ounces of gold in here. But um, I'm only going to run this once, and then I'm going to put everything back into this tub here. So <laughs> I'm going to give you a Tony Beats cleanup. You know how Tony Beats always has a bunch of crap in his gold? Well, I'm going to put all that stuff back into that concentrates, and I'm going to split them, and I'm going to send it to two people. So two people are going to split the concentrates. And I'll send them there. Like I said, I think it's about an ounce and a half. We'll see. Okay. Just sort of roll the mat here. Normally you'd put it in a bucket, but like I said, I'm really not worried about a cleanup here because I'm going to dump it all back in the concentrates. Man, there's just gold everywhere, all over the back of the mats. <laughs> Almost all this pile is now gold. Gold and lead shot. So there we are. It's almost all solid gold in here. So if I pile this up, <coughs> That looks like about one vial. <laughs> I bet you there's probably about, there's probably about a vial and a half. So maybe about an ounce and a half of gold in there. So let me get it down in the middle here. Watch this corner over here. Just tilt my pan away and just sort of tap. And you can see it start to turn yellow. I can sort of wash some of it, and then I can just turn it. Tap, tap, tap. All that gold is going to come up to that top area there. There she is. If I push it into a pile, <laughs> look at that. Uh, that's got to be an ounce right there, so... That's pretty cool. All right, so here's what it looks like. Uh, <clears throat> like I said, we're gonna give the multi-sluice, the pump, all that away on the multi-sluice, not the battery. We'll give the mini, the Raptor uh, piglet flare away. Uh, we're not giving away hoses or pumps. Here are the concentrates. I actually took the stuff that was coming off the back of the header box, because I guarantee you there's some gold in there too, a little bit. So that's what it looks like. So. There's probably about two or three cups of concentrates plus some other material. So we're gonna split that in half and send it to two people. Hey guys, so real quick, I had a couple people ask some questions on the flow pan, mainly about um, can you use it in a no flow situation? You can, but it's designed to work in flow. So let me just show you real quick what I mean about the design of it. So when the flow pan ships to you, it actually ships like this. 
So this is what the flow pan looks like. Fits under your car seat, fits in a backpack. Uh, use six wing nuts and it takes you about a minute to assemble it. And this is what you have. So you have a big sturdy flow pan. Is it sturdy? Let me put up a video real quick. We actually have run this thing over with trucks. Um, the, the, the pyramid sort of design, interlocking design of this makes it almost indestructible. So uh, the flow pan comes comes with everything you see here. It comes with a piece of talon mat that's in here. And yes, there's a gap on this end and there's a gap on this end. And we leave the gaps there so that the bolts will fit right and it acts like a little nugget trap down here. Um, this little black thing here indicates which way you want your flow to go because you want to put the top of the mat up here. Let me explain how this works. Our patent on the flow pan is not on the flow pan. The patent is on the technology that I came up with, what, two years ago, which is, is to take a regular gold pan, whether it's, whether it's a round pan like this, a regular round pan, or some type of square pan like this, and to put a cross vent technology in there to assist you in removing the non-gold material. So that's what our patent is on. Our patent is on that cross flow technology on any gold pan. It's not on this pan. I just want to make that clear. So how does it work? So you put material into here and what you do is, is the water, I'm standing in the creek and the creek is flowing away from me. So if I look upstream, the creek is upstream, the water is flowing between my legs. And so what I do is I stratify the material this way, shake it, roll it, shake it, roll it, and boom, all that gold is now settled down into the mat. It, gold falls within two to four seconds. It'll fall down to the bottom if you don't overload your pan. The next thing you do is you turn now this way. So now the flow of the creek is going this way and this tab is facing up creek. And all I do is I just gently just shake it in the water. The water will flow through these openings and will help you and assist you in removing the non-gold material. The beautiful part about that is, is you continually shake and stratify, stratify, stratify. And so that gold is continually hiding in the mat. It has a place to hide. That's the important point. And so you can just go ahead and go ahead and just keep going. Rocks will flow out and silt. Everything will flow out of here to the point where you don't want to use too much flow, but to the point where all of a sudden you're left with just a mat with stuff in it. You can put more material in it and keep going. I can work a bucket, a five gallon bucket of material in about six to eight minutes with one of these pans. These pans are actually faster than a stream sluice because you don't have to classify. It's the one piece of equipment that every prospector should have, especially dredgers. If you're gonna go out and test an area, you need to go out and get one of these so you can go quickly test, do a huge test volume and look at you and say, okay, I know I ran three or four buckets and here's the results of it. That's where the flow pan is just amazing. Now, I've got a tub here and the question is, can I use it in a non-flow situation? You can, I don't necessarily like to do it, but you can. But here's, here's the important point to this. When you're using a regular pan, so you stratify, stratify, and the gold is down at the bottom, as you start to tip, you expose that water to the back part, that back part, and I'll see a lot of gold on actually the back part of this material, and it's exposed to that flow and that gold can go out. With the flow pan, that really isn't true, because as I start to flow it like this, this back part, there's actually matting in here. So as I'm actually, I'm going to show you, demonstrate it here real quick. I'm going to stratify, 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 and then I'm just going to gently just let it flow. Stratify, stratify, gently. And the gold has a place to completely hide away from that surface tension and away from the force of the cleaning force of that flow. The other thing is, is you don't necessarily have to reach in with your hand and continually pull out rocks because these ends are going to do it. So let me just demonstrate real quick. Okay, so first, let me just show you with a regular pan. Um, I'm gonna put the dirt in here. And this is gonna be nasty, by the way, because this is raw clay material. So it's just gonna mess up this water. But I'm consistently exposing this backside with no grooves or no place for the gold to hide. So the gold is gonna wanna go out. So I stratify, stratify, stratify. And I come down, I come down. I come down and every time I do this, I'm exposing all this area. There's no place for gold to hide down in here. You have to kind of, hopefully the gold will hold right here. So let me show you the difference. 
it's gonna be tough in this little tub, but what I'm gonna do, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some raw, nasty Georgia pay. Now there isn't much, there isn't much gold in this stuff. So I'm gonna take some raw, nasty pay, unclassified with rocks. Make sure there's some rocks in there. And then what I'm gonna do, open that jar for me, Doug, so I can get a pinch. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put a pinch of uh, concentrates on top of this with some gold. Now there's almost no gold in this dirt. So we just put a little bit on top here. So now all that's on top. So without getting covered in mud and muck, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just, I'm going to just stratify, 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 stratify. That's all I'm gonna do. And now what I can do is I can sort of create my own force. Again, stratify it, stratify it, stratify it. Create my own force. Kick out the rest of the rocks. And now my gold, all my heavies and my gold have a place to hide now. They're hiding in here versus versus a pan that has no place for them really to hide on this whole area. And it's easy to get this to go out. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put this mat, I'm gonna clean this mat out, put it in a pan and show you what's in here. Now the cool thing about the flow pan, people always ask about fine gold and we have people post all the time on our Facebook page. Their pictures of their flow pan and the fine gold, they say, dude, this thing is the best piece of equipment that I've got. I'm telling you, it's probably one of my best inventions of all time is that flow pan. It's so simple, so easy to use, portable, take it everywhere you go. So let's clean out that mat, see what it looks like. Okay, so all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull the mat out and I'm gonna clean the mat into this pan. Just reverse roll it. That's all you gotta do is just reverse roll it, rinse it out. And what I mean by reverse rolling is just folding it like this, folding it like this and that opens up all those grooves. And then I'm just gonna take this Rinse this. And then I'll just finish pan it over here. So let's pretend, let's pretend what I did here was ran two full buckets of pay in the flow pan. And now I put it, I basically end up having two tablespoons that I can test that area. So now, man, this stuff is just so nasty. So now I can just go ahead and pan it down. Again, I gotta keep I gotta keep stratifying, stratifying, and stratifying. Let's see if there's even any gold. Oh, there's some gold showing up. lead shot. Oh, there's a piece of hematite in here. Man, I haven't seen hematite in forever. Red garnet sand. I know where these are from. These concentrates are dredge concentrates because there's pyrite, there's hematite. All right, so you can see, hopefully, you can see that fine gold right at my fingertip. There's a whole bunch of it sitting right up there. Nothing huge. So to answer your question, whoever you were, yes, you can use it, but let me tell you what, it's just, it's like running a research system. I mean, look how nasty, this is, this is one pan. Look how nasty that water is. And this is a Georgia excavated clay. The beautiful thing, maybe I'll put a piece of video up here real quick, is when you're using that flow pan the correct way, so I stand down creek, I face down creek, stratify 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 turn sideways in the creek and just gently just shake it and all that material will flow through and it'll clean out and you just move it and move it and move it once you get the hang of it man 
you can go. You can really flip. Always start off with a flow pan with a small amount of material. Don't overload it until you get the hang of it. But uh, that's about it. So that's that flow pan answer. So guys, hope you enjoyed this video. A couple of important points real quick. Don't forget, sign up for the email alerts. Go to the description, the link in the description below. There's a page with all the information about the giveaways, when we're doing it, what's involved with it, how you sign up for it. Plus, we'll probably end up doing a, a flow pan giveaway every month for the next few months to that list. So, and we'll post that up probably on Facebook. Make sure you go to our Facebook page. Drop a comment down below, uh, hit the like button, and share this video. Share it. Why not? <laughs> Anyways, guys, uh, temperatures are starting to drop. It's uh, November. It's a good time to get out and do some cold prospecting. Man, that's looking good. Doc, you are one sexy dude with that beard. <laughs> Anyways, guys, talk to you later. Doc, Goldhog.